Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 88. Hello, and welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson, and I'm back with Julian Pombo. Yes, not John Pombo, who was last week's. <laughs> yeah, John Pombo has left the building. Yeah, John Pombo was never existed. Um, he was a figment of your imagination. How, how are you doing sleepy. today? Sleepy. <laughs> You're sleepy. Yeah, right. I'd, uh, I'd, I didn't sleep in at all, and Julian wasn't waiting on me for nearly an hour. It's too that didn't happen. No? Uh, yeah, I had a wedding last night, and... I, I slept through my alarm, which I don't tend to do. Oh boy. So yeah. Yeah. By an hour. Yeah, so that was that was fun. Yeah, had a had a Tuesday night wedding. Who was, who gets married on a Tuesday? People who get cancelled five times through COVID. Right. That's that's who. Um try you try booking a, a venue on a Saturday right now. You won't get anything this side no. of twenty twenty four. I mean we were quite lucky to get a uh, a Friday. Mm. Um, it was um, yeah, which is it's pretty standard, you know, uh, a fr- Friday night wedding. Um, but it was it, we booked it like at the start of this year, and we just called them up and we were like, no, I think it was an email. I sent them an email and I was like, do you have any dates from the first of October? They were like, we only have the first of October. Perfect. And I was like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were so lucky. I, yeah, unbelievably lucky. People were asking me like, oh, was it like rescheduled a lot? I was like, no, <laughs> no. Um, and you know, we also did it in possibly a, 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 a actually in a really short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Compared to most people who, you know, yeah, take yeah. about two years or so, yeah, to plan it. We were like <laughs> ten months, baby. Yeah, engaged for ten years and then ten months <laughs> prep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, engaged for about eight, eight years ish, but like going out for like going out years. for ten years. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Funny. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm 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 not bad, not bad at all. Uh, been doing a lot of cleaning. I was uh, 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 upstairs in my house. I'll keep it very brief. Basically, quite susceptible to black mold. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing my best to sort of like figure out how how I can sort of sort it. So I've got a dehumidifier, uh, nice. which I'm going to start like basically turning on and putting into the bathroom once it's been, once it's been used. Mm. Um, and, and that sort of thing. And the other room, which had a mold problem, uh, got more insulation. Uh, so, and that's kind of fixed it, but man, like see British houses, yeah. So bad for insulation. Badly um, built British houses, yeah. Badly built British houses. Um, you know, this this one is like a, 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 uh, it's like a build from like the eighties and uh mm. it's um it's I, I mean I can't I, I can't really it's a it's a roof over my head in a pretty decent area. Like at the end of the day, you know. I've got that going for me, you know. Yep. So it's just, just having there to was, deal with it. I think that, that's what um, I've been up to. There's a thing that was going around maybe like twenty years ago, where people would come round and chap your door and say, "Hey, would you like some uh, insulation in your house?" Blah blah blah. And it was this expandable foam stuff. Mm-hmm. So they were going like round all like the 1960s housing, and they have uh, cavities. And the, and so what it what it is it's like a outer brick wall and then yeah. then a cavity then another brick wall then it's the inside of your house. 
the yeah. idea is it's like it's insulated with a layer of of uh, basically air. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you wouldn't get any dampness. But these houses were hella cold. They were freezing cold, these houses. Yeah. They were very well insulated, but cold, but not damp. So people were getting this insulation stuff. Mm-hmm. So they were filling their cavities with this expandable foam, which you can't remove because it's in between two brick walls. So they were, they were doing all this. And then the water that seeps in through the outside brick would come through through Rotted the through foam. the expandable yeah. foam and then into the living room and everyone's like walls were going black and stuff like can you imagine i'm, I'm paying for that to happen <laughs> yeah that's that's why they built the cavities like oh oopsies that's why they did it so yeah i know it could be worse it could be worse it could be worse um so what's but, today's episode about so today's episode we uh, dealing with mold <laughs> dealing with mold yeah how to deal with if you've got moldy musicians <laughs> um, i've met a few of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy just uh you know five parts water one part bleach and then just scrub a dub dub there you so go i would go for the high pressure washer root like <laughs> high pressure yeah 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 that's what I would do. So yeah, uh, no. Uh, today is it's going to be dealing with with burnout, not the video game like we said last week. <laughs> yeah. um, although for us it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, burnout is a term that I I hear a lot, and everybody that I know has has mentioned it at some point. I'm I'm mentioning it right now. Um, but um, mostly where I've seen it, where I've seen it a lot, and probably where most of you might have seen it, is is on YouTube. Every single YouTuber that I know of has made a video at some point, being like, "I'm burnt out. I'm taking a break." You yeah. know, everybody's burnt out, and it seems to be hitting a very particular demographic of people. Uh, which is our generation and the uh, generation after us, you know, Gen Gen Zers, the Zoomers, mm. and, and millennials seem to get hit by and Gen A eventually. <laughs> and Gen A, it will hit them. I don't know what age they are now. What's the oldest Gen A? I don't know. Probably like ten or something. I yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, it's a very particular problem burnout and you're more susceptible to you know encountering burnout especially especially if you're self-employed i think um yeah yes so we're gonna first of all what what is burnout um it's it's basically like it's it's a very overwhelming feeling it's just a bunch of different things all at the same time. You're you're tired. You lack mo- motivation to do to do things. You start procrastinating, and uh, you start you're sort of letting them. You're dropping a ball. Yeah. More often than yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, than you usually would, uh, or or at all. You know. Yep. Um. So that's that's what burnout is. It's, I wonder if you could classify it as some kind of like, um, it's like a mental health thing, isn't it? Really, at the end of it's the a, day, it's a, it's it's first and foremost, it's a, it's a product of having been too busy or mm. uh, you've been working too hard, yes. and you just start to fold under the pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, because you haven't uh, put in measures in your schedule to take breaks and time off. Um, mm. I know a few people like that, that they burn out every now and again because they they don't take time off. Mm. So if you're self-employed especially, you have to physically put a thing in your in your diary that says day off. Yeah. Um, because if you don't do it, you'll never have a day off. 
Um, yeah. Cause no one's your, em, your employer's not going to give you a day off. It's no, just, you yeah. are your employer. You are your employer. Exactly. Um, today's my day off actually. Um, oh. but I'm sorry that you're having to spend it with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think doing a podcast would be that big a, no. a deal. Um, but yeah, no, totally. I I feel like a part part of the problem, as well, is there's very much a, it's like a societal thing. Like we're always ex- like people are expected to be working all the time, all like all the time. Um, uh, I just it, it it feels like, or that that's what people are saying, you know. Like and then people start feeling guilty about not not working and not doing things and it just it just snowballs into this mm-hmm. this this big this big thing um and you know and just always people talking about you know like oh you gotta work hard and then if you're not working hard you gotta work harder um yep you know yes i'm i'm a farmer's son you know, i know all about that great <laughs> <laughs> you know like People talking about grind, you know, grind sets and things like that. Yeah, and you know, yeah, yeah. It's, ri- it's ridiculous. So, um, a couple of ways to avoid burnout. Um, as a musician, as band. a musician, or just as a band, a band or, or a person. person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this <clears throat> this can apply to everybody, but um, first one that I sort of thought of is mm. um, take time as a band to just hang out you know yep um as so as important. people not as people yeah, not yeah. as professionals and not like creating music or anything like that um or writing stuff um just decide on a day we've as a band we've not done you know we've not done that in ages we should, probably should at some point um we're not suffering suffering from burnout. We're suffering. No, from we're the not opposite. suffering from <laughs> burnout. Yeah, I don't know what you would call that stagnation. Out. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, freeze out. I think it's yeah maybe <laughs> uh, freezing. Yeah. Um, I think it's important whether your band has not seen each other in a long time, or if your band has not seen each other in a long time, or. Uh, if your band's working quite a lot just taking like once a month sort of thing of just like hey let's uh let's just hang out somewhere you know go bowling or if you like doing that sort of thing hey nico let's go bowling (laughs) (laughs) i mean like as an example i don't know uh bowling's fun or uh you know have people around if you're house is big enough have people around for a movie or some food or go out uh, in town you know like the world's opened up a little bit um just take some time to just hang out that's you know and don't feel guilty about it because that's that is there's it's not really such a thing as well, there is such a thing as time wasted, but um, you know, you sh- if if you feel like you're wasting time, you should really take time to sort of uh, assess, yeah. you know, why you feel it is that you're wasting time, yeah. right? If I'm just sitting about and I'm doing nothing, when there are a couple of things I could, probably could be doing, yeah, okay, I might be wasting time, but um, going out to see friends or family or just hanging out with your band members and not doing anything (laughs) productive isn't isn't wasting time it's just not you know you're 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 doing something that is that's good which is being social because we're social beings (laughs) at the end of the day yeah um yeah if you if you find yourself in those situations where you're like Oh, I should be back doing this and we're wasting time and oh control freak, control freak, control freak. Mm-hmm. Um just that's that's a red flag. I know a few people like this who can't they can't take time off. They can't do it. They just get antsy and uh they feel I don't know if it's guilt. Um the the whole time that they're away or yeah. out, say on holiday or whatever, they're just 
impossible. It's diff yeah, it's difficult though. I feel like it's it's hard when you're a musician as well because it's happened to me before where I'm on holiday and uh, all I've wanted to do is just turn my phone off and just put it away and not deal with it. And but I can't do that because then people get in touch with me and if I don't get if I don't reply quickly I might damage my reputation in some way or another. So yeah. you do find yourself in those tricky situations. Do you know what I should have done in that case? I should have just told the relevant people, I'm on holiday. I'm turning my phone off. Just put on See an autoresponder. Auto, yeah. Autoresponder, like, I'll, like you can do that and then that on the iPhone anyway, just like, oh, I'm on holiday, I'll see you in a week. I'll be back yeah. on the 14th. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a thing on Android. Must be. Must be, surely. Must be. I'll have a look. Um, to be honest, I don't get texts, really. Like, text, text, mm. old-fashioned texts. I'd be lucky if I get one a month. It's all WhatsApp yeah. and Messenger. Well, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if you can do that on WhatsApp and Messenger. You can on pages. You can, like, I know my studio page, I have an autoresponder. Okay. Which I keep trying to turn off, but it keeps turning back on again. I don't know why that is. Every time there's an update, it turns back on. And I'm sending random messages to people. Like, not me. My, my autoresponder is. I'm like, I've turned turned you off, like, two months ago. Stop it. Because pe people are like, hi there, I'd like to talk to you about, like, hi there, my name is, <laughs> like, stop sending auto responses. Facebook, you've been warned. Um, That's interesting, I thought of that. I'll, uh, I'll look into that. Well, there you go, there's a solution. Well, yeah. that's that's what I was going to say, like, that's how I deal with burnout, um, is the tasks that I can automate get automated. Mm. So, um said this a billion times but I'm going to say it again um because I deal with a lot of bookings I deal with a lot of clients booking rehearsals and recording sessions in the studio um for the longest time I used to do it all over text so you would get hi there have you got the 14th 15th 16th and 18th free at uh, the first day three till six six till nine the next day, just six till nine. The next day, 12 to three, three till six, six till nine. This is when we're free. And then I have to cross-reference. And then by the time I get back to them, oh, actually, no, the basses can't do it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like two, three, four, five, six exchanges per band. Mm -hmm. Constantly texting, constantly emailing, constantly, constantly, constantly. And all I was like, I need to stop this. This is driving me crazy all i'm doing all day is just replying to people mm. so then i got a booking software so it has access to my calendar i don't i just have to give them a link and they book themselves in and it has saved me hours and hours and hours of time mm -hmm. it's completely irre irreplaceable at this point it's it's saved my sanity as well I can imagine. um yeah. i can even put in uh, PayPal link so that I don't even have to deal with cash and that saves me a huge bunch of time now now I don't have to go to the bank every week because it's all online so they just pay over PayPal and I've not got like wads of cash I have to take to the bank which is not exactly fun to do in a rough area <laughs> which is the, where my bank is I don't really like walking down the main street yeah. with a bag of cash um, so that, that little changes like that has constituted um, or contributed towards my uh, burnout problems. Because yeah. I used to get quite stressed and a little bit run down. Yeah. I, would, I would always get colds and stuff. Um, I would get ill when... When you're burnt, when you're burnt out, you just your your immune yeah. system suffers too. Yeah, yeah. You've just given me an idea which I hadn't thought of uh, ever until you just mentioned it there. Well, I might start using your system for people wanting to book lessons. Yeah, man. I'm so stupid. Hey, but it's one of those things, unless somebody tells you, like, you just... You I'll help you set it up if you want. That would be good, actually. And then I can just message all my pupils and be like, Here hey, um, if you want to book lessons from now on, here is here's the link, here's how to do it. Save you so much time. Um, so much time. And then it just pops up in your calendar and you don't have to think about it. 
<sighs> yeah. So you can set up so that <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're like, what? It's <laughs> so good. Um, you could set up to to include the PayPal thing as well. You can have them. Yeah. But yeah. you have to pay PayPal a fee. It's a professional fee. It's like, I think for like £25 or £20, it's like a pound. Um, so, I mean, if you put your rates up by a pound, then it covers the PayPal costs. Like, um, it's fine. Or uh, you pay, you pay, you basically pay the pound for the privilege of not having to constantly email people. So that's the way I think of it. Of it. Yep, I'm gonna start doing that, and then it's just on my students to, because the problem I'm having is just loads of exchanges with people, just mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, or people text me like, "Hey, when are you free?" And like, I'm like, "Well, when am I free?" Uh, this day, this. Day, this day. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only issue with that system is if you're not if you're not uh, strict with yourself and and that if your wife says hey Julian we're going to my parents this Saturday and you're like cool and you don't put it in your diary and a kid books in yeah you're in hot water so yeah. as soon as anything comes in like I'm literally washing my hair you put it in the diary so that they can't book it um, or you put available hours say like oh you can you can book uh, 10 till 5 whatever honestly save so much time it's brilliant yeah i think i'll i'll, I'll start doing that um anyway that's yeah. genius so i've just um, i've just uh sh go. shared this with now your burnout will be uh less prevalent uh, yeah yeah it will be because it's just something i'm always thinking about you know like booking in students and things like that totally um right that's uh, a self-employed thing anyway um, if you're employed um, and you're suffering burnout, um, if you, if you are employed, like most places of employment, you have uh, leave days. You know, you have I think it's like twenty one days or twenty eight days or something of leave. You have pay, you know, holiday holidays to take. Um, like some people choose not to take them because they like to work the extra time. Mm -hmm. Take them. That's what, that would be my, my advice. My sister used to not take them. She used to just build them all up and then maybe go on a big holiday. But what ends up happening is she would work herself into the ground. My sister's really bad for this. She's worse than me, actually, for burnout. Um, she works... She's a project manager, project... Um, not project manager. What's the word? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what the term... It's a Chandler Bing job. But it's, <laughs> she works at the BBC. So she she's basically Anne Hathaway in... The Devil Wears Prada, but right. at like the BBC and some and ITV and stuff, she does like TV shows, and she usually works for like little stints, and she burns herself into the ground mm -hmm. for, and then she has a big holiday, right? Um, but it's just the nature of her work; she can't really take a break in the middle of a show, in the middle of shooting. Yeah, um, it's just the nature. But if you can, I think I would prefer to take little short breaks often rather than wait for one big one that's just me i don't know yeah like a wee weekend a long weekend here a long weekend there yeah kinda. uh huh that's usually what I, what I like to do it's just a little couple of days here a couple of days there um and then at some point like a week somewhere kind yeah. of thing yeah rather than <clears throat> you know do what I do and, and wait for five years to book a holiday. So last last time I went on holiday was 2015. I've just booked a holiday last week. Uh, oh, cool. We're going to Spain for a week in June. Nice. So this will be my first holiday since 2015. Gorsh. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to book a holiday at the moment. I'm just, I'm still waiting on my mum to get back Uh. uh to me with like dates and things but um you you, t you tend to be quite good with booking holidays you you go to um uh, I, 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 I yeah i tend to do more like sort of like local holidays yeah, scotland like, and yeah local places uh-huh it's uh, the kind of thing that i like to do because i don't uh i've done the occasional holiday where i've gone somewhere but like that's got its own like <laughs> that's its own thing you know like if, if like when we went to malta it was like all right let's go to malta and let's see the things yeah it's not necessarily a holiday it's still yeah. stressy uh it, it can be 
you know and then there's like the whole like uh, uh you know acclimatizing to like a new culture and like you know the, that kind of thing you know because uh uh, anyway, that's that's for another time. Um, but yeah, just little little breaks. You don't even have to go anywhere. Just like yeah, yeah. just take a couple of days off to just just chill out mm -hmm. and do things. Um, let's see what else. What what else is it? Oh yeah, I think this is a really important one. Mm. Um, Deal with things that are bugging you and get them out of the way, either as a band or in your own personal life. So, okay. um, I think a lot of burnout um, uh, happens from like little outlying things that are in the back of your mind constantly, all the time, you know. So, um, as a band, it could be an unfinished EP or somebody not getting... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Who are you talking to? Are you talking to me? <laughs> it's nobody's fault. <laughs> As an example, uh -huh. or like you're waiting on people getting back to you, you know, and like uh, dates are like gig dates are like uncertain and, you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Or in your own personal life, your room's a mess. Or like there's something wrong with the taps in your house or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it's just, and it's one of those things where you're like, oh, yeah, I need to get that at some point. I need to get, and it just, and then another thing happens and another thing happens. Try and yep. deal with them as, as they come. And if it gets really bad, just take time to just go, right. We're doing it right now. I'll tell, I'll tell you what's annoying me, but. What is annoying you right now that you know you could fix? What is annoying me right now? Um, uh, well, it's actually, it's currently a work in progress, which is my old room upstairs. Right. Um, but I'm just waiting on on certain things to arrive before I can do that. So yeah. it's in progress, but for ages it was in the back of my mind. Right. And uh, what I ended up doing was actually making a list of things that just needed to get done and i split it up with small things and big projects so small projects big projects yeah and what i've ended up doing is just i've already managed to get through a couple of the small projects which in turn feed into the big projects if that makes sense yep um so that's just <clears throat> an example uh um the car you know um need to uh, took the car in today because it was making funny noises um which is usually not not a good thing not advisable the wheels were making funny noises so yeah um you know yep. um and it's it's things like that just um try and get them dealt with it's difficult for somebody somebody like me <laughs> cuz i um I I have a tendency to put things off. I just it's one of the things that I'm quite bad at and right. I'm trying to I'm trying to fix, you know. Um I think everyone but, does that. Yeah, everybody does it to an extent. Yeah. Some more than others. I feel like I'm on the more side. Um you know, because it's all got to do with your with your personality. You know, if you're more conscientious, I'm sure you'll get you'll be quicker to deal with those kind of things. But... And you, you get more stressed mm -hmm. uh, when you do put something off. I've been putting off my tax returns, and it's driving me crazy. Oh, there's another one. There's yeah. another one that I, I need did, to do as well. I did the band tax returns last week and got that sent off. Mm. I need because to do... the the hassle I had last time with with the because. Uh, Eriska is a it's a partnership, so yeah. it can't in Britain. You can't file for uh, partnership tax returns online. It has to be done via paper, the old fashioned way, and sent in the, in the mail. And because of that, it has to be done by Halloween um, to yeah. get processed. So I sent it off last week. Yeah. No, the online ones don't need to be done until thirty first of January. Yeah, so I'm not as worried. Um, although I have two, I have two to do. I have three tax returns to do. Yeah, so I have the partnership, and then I have to do my partner, because I have to do the partnership as a business, and then I have to do my own partner side. 
Right. My partner has to do her partner side, and then I have to do my own self-employment musician yeah. thing as well. I just have one to worry about. Thank goodness. So I have two books. I keep two books, one for the partnership and one for my own stuff. And it it's driving me nuts. I'm I'm on the verge of getting an accountant. Um if if I'm if I'm gonna be doing more projects down the line and I don't have time, that's that's gonna be a thing that's gonna to contribute to burnout, is if I keep doing my own books, doing my own uh, tax returns rather. When you've just got the one thing to yeah, it's not too worry bad. about, it's, it's fine. Like, for me, I, I need to sort out... Um, I need to sort out my, um, like, uh, student loan stuff. Uh, yeah, so I, don't, I didn't have to bother with that, obviously, because I'm not a student and never have been. Um, mm. But that, that's another thing that helped with burnout as well. Uh, I used to have a paper book, so I, I used to write in all my my entries in, in a paper book with a actual pen. Um, and I had to do it every single week, all the time. It just used to drive me crazy. Because um, it would always be like at the end of the day, I'd be like tired and then I was like, oh no, I have to do my books at the end of the, the week or whatever. And now I use QuickBooks. So my books basically do themselves. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. And all my receipts... This, this is how cool it is. If, you, if you're self-employed and you, you don't have QuickBooks, I recommend you get it. But if you're self-employed and you're doing your own books, you have to get receipts and invoices and stuff and attach it in your book for proof or whatever. Um, so say you go and you get fuel and it's part of your tax return, you can scan the receipt with your phone and just, you can email it to an email address at QuickBooks. So it's like uh, invoices at quickbooks.com or whatever. And it'll link with the online transaction without you doing anything. You can gather up all your invoices on your computer, send them on a bulk email, and it'll just go and send them all to the relevant transactions. You don't even have to do it. It's, it's insane. Um, saves so much time. Um, and you're not panicking and worrying it's like the the partnership I was just talking about. I did a year's worth of books in ten minutes. <laughs> so yeah. easy. I just went back to it and went business, business, personal, personal, business, personal, business, business, and then got all the invoices which I'd kept. Went blah, 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 done. Ten minutes. Bang. Done. Into HMRC. Written down. Posted. Like pfft. that used to take me weeks and weeks to do in the past with the old paper stuff yeah yeah i'm a big advocate on automation and technology trying to help you do boring and menial tasks easier faster yeah um, if you can figure out a way to automate it or delegate it or you know by getting an accountant yeah. do it yeah if you can uh-huh um, so that you've got more time to not be working, especially if you're self-employed. Because um, it's like the more time I can spend sitting behind the mixing desk making music, the better. And the less time I am doing emails and all the boring stuff, the better. Mm. And that certainly helps. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, a couple of... Uh uh, other things and uh, these are more like self-care more self-care things yeah um even if you're if you're working a lot and you're stressed out you need to take time to um like establish a good self-care routine and you know like shaving and things <laughs> <laughs> and and brushing your teeth and things like that i feel like uh, it seemed seems obvious but i think a lot of people like that's the first thing to go and then it's just downhill from there right um that's when it gets really really bad right you know and it, then it, it depends uh, on your personality type. Uh -huh, it does totally i would say i'm more orderly than industrious so the the first conscientious ball that i drop is the productivity one but the orderliness never leaves ever, right. ever, 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 ever. It's part. It's built in my my routine. Mm -hmm. I can't not do it. It's like breathing. Well, there you go. I think like part of it is like you know make it part of have a routine. 
that you yeah that you um keep to very uh fastidiously yeah i guess is the correct word um you know and like because little bits of order in your life will just will help you know it's not it's not time wasted you know yeah, so oh, I don't have time to brush my teeth. I need to do this, that, the other. You know, even, you don't have time to eat lunch like you do. No, I mean, even even when I had, when I was about eighteen, I had the flu. And for anyone who's really had the flu, and I'm not talking about, I can't come into work today. I've got the flu. No, I mean, I was hallucinating dinosaurs. That's the flu. Right? Wow. You know, forty-one degrees Celsius temperature. I still brush my teeth. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I still got out of bed to brush teeth and and do my routine thing as best as I could. Mm-hmm. My entire body was aching. I was sweating gallons of water, and I was hallucinating dinosaurs in my room. They were dancing around my room in front of me, and I was like, "That's happening! I can see dinosaurs running around my room, completely, completely hallucinating." But I still have this like must get up to brush my teeth. And wow. That's that's how that's a psycho I am. Um, even when I'm chronically ill, I'm still like my routine. Um, that's just my personality, though. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but routine is very important. <clears throat> um, don't don't sacrifice that for. I'm a, I'm for a, work. I'm very routine orientated. Um, yeah, I, I I can't I can't function without uh, without food. I can't function without sleep. See if I don't get proper sleep, mm-hmm. I am useless, completely yeah. useless. See, um, when two years ago when we went to Switzerland, mm-hmm. uh, we our flight was at f- seven, but we had to be at the airport for four, mm-hmm. half four in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got up at three, half two, three. Um, so I got like three hours sleep four hours sleep maybe and yeah. if i don't get seven and a half hours sleep i'm crap i i can't do it and i felt rotten i was ill for like two days the first two days of the the trip because it i just i'm i'm dreadful like if i don't get my full sleep or if i don't eat a meal i can't some people some people are like really good at it they can just Outlast it, but I'm no, terrible. Wait, if I'm if I'm hungry, <clears throat> uh, I just get really angry. Yeah, uh, I get I get Grumpy. I get hangry. Yeah, I but get, like yeah, really, yes, really, yeah. it's it, it can be pretty bad, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, I feel you. I'm the same, but with tiredness, probably more so. Yeah, tiredness. Uh, I can deal with being tired. Um, it's not, it's not too bad. I'll feel rubbish, but like, it's, um, if I'm hungry and then, (laughs) yeah, it's not good. (laughs) Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty bad for that. Um, just if I'm doing a lot of gigs, say I've got three or four gigs in in the trot, like I've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday gigs. Mm-hmm. But come Monday morning, I just don't don't go near me. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not good. Uh, I, m- I remember there was a problem with my automation system, mm-hmm. my calend my calendar Calendly bookings. I forgot to give myself time in the morning after a gig, so I was getting bookings for bands at ten a.m. Mm-hmm. after having played in Aberdeen the night before, and getting in at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> With my drum kit. So I had to get up early, set up my drums that I played the night before and all the mics before 10 o'clock, before the band arriving. And I was burning out. I burnt myself out doing that. So from then on, every time I book a gig, I make sure I leave myself till till one o'clock in the afternoon before someone can book. Right. Um, except for today, because you don't book in, you just ask me. <laughs> so as a result, yeah. I was like, oh... <laughs> Yeah, podcast this morning. That was that was my bad. Dropping the balls. No, no. It's like, um, sometimes things happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, I think uh, that's that's all I can think of on 
on burnout it's kind of just um it's it, you know it's cool to like talk about you know music stuff but like the, 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 the at the end of the day like the so I think the thing that sort of is more important you know it's be, behind the band is the people in, in the band and if the people in the band are not working good then a band does not work good correct basically correct yeah you know um, so it's really important that you take care of yourself I um there's a few bands that I know of that have particular members that are a wee bit problematic uh, in terms of not having their their S words together um, mm. but the rest of the band do have their S word together and it just drags everything down because you're 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 only strong as your weakest member kind of thing you know if they're like doing too many projects it's usually it's usually to do with um you're just in too many bands too many projects and you're burning yourself out that way yeah too many commitments yeah that's another that's an that's another good point which reminds me to something that liam said in his interview uh which yeah. is what my bass player and my bass teacher uh, <clears throat> uh used to tell people which is that um if you're needing to cut out bands and things like that there's three criteria that you want to um put against these bands and they should at least meet two to make them worthwhile which is are they good to sort of are they good people to hang out with is the music fun to play and is the money good mm -hmm. right any of those two um at in least any combination, two, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's probably worthwhile being in that band. Right. Um, uh, but if you're in a band that only does, you know, oh, the people are nice, but yeah. the music's not that good, I don't get paid any money, or, oh, the music's really good, but the people are dreadful, mm -hmm. and there's no money, or I get paid a lot of money, but I hate the people that I'm working with, and the music sucks. Yeah. <laughs> not worth it. No, no. It's a good way of doing it. Um, and if you're in a position where you're maybe you're quite sought after as a musician and you have two bands that you have all three and then you have 10 bands that have two then you can prioritize the the ones that oh yeah they, they like they they exist they're not unicorns like yeah. they are out there they exist 100 percent. yeah you know um, um you know so you can you're you're in a position to prioritize you're also in a position to barter as well don't be afraid to do that if you if you uh, are doing like debt gigs or stuff and they're like oh we need a bassist and then you you'll say like well i'm fully booked all the time i have lots of you know bands that meet the three criteria so you you're in a position where people are wanting me to be in their band so mm -hmm. you can charge whatever you like. Yeah. Like you can say, well, I'll, I'll need um, £300 for that. And they can say I or nay, because you could take it or leave it. Um, there's no point in leaving the house for, you know, something that you you could you could do somewhere else for more money. Yeah. Um, because you're you're in a you're in a decent position. But if you're starting out and you get offered, you know, 120 quid or 150 quid for a gig somewhere, mm. you know, with a band, and you like the people, then go for it. Um, yeah, but it's obviously it's not all about the money. If you if you got offered two hundred and fifty pounds with a band that you don't like, maybe you like the music, but it's in some really bad venue. Like, I think I would turn it down. I think I would turn it down. Right. Because if I didn't like the people, that's eh -eh, money's good. Okay, fine. And it's in the worst venue in the world to load into as a drummer. I would say no. See, I would, I would act actually uh, put an, an extra criteria on that. Right. How's the load? How's the loading? Because I've turned down gigs based on loading. Right. Because I'm like, nah. Like, not only is it one way street, it's also a bus lane. You can't park there. If you park, if you park there, you get a fine. You have to phone the council and ask permission to to load in. 
and it's like an elevator and stuff. You have to go and round the back and get keys and all this. I can't be bothered with that. Like, no. Can't be bothered with that. Like, I'll just take a gig from someone else. Um, so basically all gigs in Edinburgh are out. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Unless they're at a hotel with lots of parking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tend to find that in Edinburgh. I don't know why. Yeah. Nothing against Edinburgh. But no. It's a very pretty city. It is. But it's just inaccessible oh, to it's musicians. Oh, so impractical. Yeah. Anyway. Um, that's, that's sort of burnout. it on burnout. Um, Love so... It. I hope that helps. Yeah, um, helped me. Mm-hmm. It, it helped me. I learned things yeah. that I wasn't expecting to learn. So yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I've got a potential band uh, interview. Oh, P- potential, potential. I just Ooh. need to figure out some dates. But yeah, full band and uh, f- a full band interview in in here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We'll see if we can get them in person, live and in person. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, or or over Zoom. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Zoom for me isn't a problem anymore because I actually have good internet now. Mm-hmm. Well, we could like we could set it up in here mm-hmm. as to here and then Zoom. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, with the rest of them. We'll, so we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get them on. Yeah. Uh, be, I talked about this a while ago, like doing a, like a full band interview. So yeah, see how that goes. Maybe. Anyway, um, I don't know if that'll be next week. Probably won't be. It'll be something else. Um, but yeah, we've got some stuff in the pipeline anyway. So as always, if you're enjoying listening to us talk crap for an hour, um, you can <laughs> give us a five star review for that crap. Um, it's yes. premium crap, Premi- by the way. Yes. Uh, so make su- make sure you you give us some five star for for our premium crap. And if you can't get enough of our crap, we also offer free downloadable sheets on music theory and all all the stuff, uh, affordable gear lists and yes stuff. Okay. Thanks. On our website, uh, levelupyourband.com, and we release the podcast video on YouTube and Facebook. Yep. Um, if you maybe you want to watch it on TV, I don't know. You can you can do that. It's, it's also in video form as well as podcast form. So yeah, um, that was burnout. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Great game. Ten out of ten. Yeah, ten out of ten. IGN. Yes. Too much water. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, enjoyed that. Hope that was useful and. Yeah, hope you all have a fantastic week. See you next time. See you.